Welcome to Electrical Engineering Channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications to don't miss our upcoming videos. After watching this video, you will be able to answer these questions. What are the AC motor speed control options? How the power frequency affecting the motor speed? What are the AC motor main parts? How the AC motor operates? What is AVFD? How does a variable frequency drive work? What is the DC bus voltage level? What is the AC ripple on the DC bus? What is the difference between converter and inverter? What is the relationship between output voltage and frequency? What is the pulse width modulation? What are the main VFD parts? Why should I use a VFD? Normally how do we control our motors, in the industrial field? First option to use a contactor, which will cause high starting torque and current and very fast it will reach the maximum speed. Other better option is to use a soft starter, which will reduce the starting torque, and the motor speed will ramp up till reach the full speed, but it will take time more than the contactor. But in both cases, just the motor has reached the full speed it will be stuck there until we turn it off. But in some applications it's required to adjust the speed during operation, so we need a variable frequency drive. When we need to start a motor, the power is connected to the circuit breaker input, and the breaker output to be connected to the VFD. If the motor required to run with the full speed the VFD will transfer the power to the motor with the same frequency but also the VFD can cut down the motor speed by reducing the output power frequency, say to 30 Hz from 50 Hz, so the motor will slow down. Also the VFD is able to change the output speed again and again during the operation. For better understanding how the power frequency affecting the three-phase motor speed, Back in the late 1800s Nikola Tesla invented the three-phase AC motor. You can imagine the effect if Mr. Tesla didn't invent the AC motor, at least we wouldn't make this video. In Mr. Tesla design there are two main parts. Starter and rotor. The stator including the windings. A, B and C phase. The rotor is the second part which is located in the motor center and it's the part which spins when motor start, it's also attached to motor shaft, which will be linked to the driven load. Now we need to understand how the motor operates. When the A phase enters the motor, the electricity flowing causes one set of the winding to be positive and the opposite set to become negative. That will create a magnetic field between them. If you see the sine wave pattern, when the sine wave is in the positive half, the winding in this side will be positively charged, and the other side is negatively charged. When the sine wave is in the negative half, the polarity inside the motor reverses. By the effect of these magnetic fields, the rotor will be charged as well. If we added the B and C phases, when a phase losses the strength, the B phase will gain strength then will lose the strength later and C phase will gain the strength as well and that will keep the magnetic rotating continuously till motor stopped. The rotating magnetic field will complete one cycle when the A phase starts from zero, then being positive for half cycle, negative for another half cycle then back again to zero. And as well the rotor will try to follow the stator rotating magnetic field. Let we imagine that this cycle will be repeated for 50 times in one second. The rotor will spin in a certain speed. If we slow the frequency of these cycles to be 30 times per second and we know that the rotor will follow the rotating state or magnetic field. So the rotor will slow down as well. So now, how could we define the VFD? A variable frequency drive is a type of motor controller that drives an electric motor by varying the frequency and voltage supplied to the electric motor. Other names for a VFD are variable speed drive, adjustable speed drive, adjustable frequency drive, 
AC drive, micro drive, and inverter. How does a variable frequency drive work? The first stage of a variable frequency AC drive, or VFD, is the converter. The converter is comprised of six diodes, which are similar to check valves used in plumbing systems. They allow current to flow in only one direction, the direction shown by the arrow in the diode symbol. For example, whenever A phase voltage is more positive than B or C phase voltages, then that diode will open and allow current to flow. When B phase becomes more positive than A phase, then the B phase diode will open and the A phase diode will close. The same is true for the three diodes on the negative side of the bus. Thus, we get six current pulses as each diode opens and closes. This is called a six pulse VFD, which is the standard configuration for current variable frequency drives. Let us assume that the drive is operating on a 480 volt power system. The 480 volt rating is root mean squared. The peaks on a 480 volt system are 679 volt. As in this photo, the VFD DC bus has a DC voltage with an AC ripple. The voltage runs between approximately 580 volt and 680 volt. We can get rid of the AC ripple on the DC bus by adding a capacitor. A capacitor operates in a similar fashion to a reservoir or accumulator in a plumbing system. This capacitor absorbs the AC ripple and delivers a smooth DC voltage. The AC ripple on the DC bus is typically less than 3 volts. Thus, the voltage on the DC bus becomes approximately 650 volts DC. The actual voltage will depend on the voltage level of the AC line feeding the drive, the level of voltage unbalance on the power system, the motor load, the impedance of the power system, and any reactors or harmonic filters on the drive. The diode bridge converter that converts AC to DC, is sometimes just referred to as a converter. The converter that converts the DC back to AC is also a converter, but to distinguish it from the diode converter, it is usually referred to as an inverter. It has become common in the industry to refer to any DC to AC converter as an inverter. When we close one of the top switches which actually is a thyristor in the inverter, that phase of the motor is connected to the positive DC bus and the voltage on that phase becomes positive. When we close one of the bottom switches in the inverter, that phase is connected to the negative DC bus and becomes negative. Thus, we can make any phase on the motor become positive or negative at will and can thus generate any frequency that we want. So, we can make any phase be positive, negative, or zero. Notice that the output from the VFD is a rectangular waveform. VFDs do not produce a sinusoidal output. This rectangular waveform would not be a good choice for a general purpose distribution system, but is perfectly adequate for a motor. If we want to reduce the motor frequency to 30 Hz, then we simply switch the inverter output thyristors more slowly. But, if we reduce the frequency to 30 Hz, then we must also reduce the voltage to 240 volts in order to maintain the VHZ ratio. How are we going to reduce the voltage if the only voltage we have is 650 VDC? This is called pulse width modulation or PWM. Imagine that we could control the pressure in a water line by turning the valve on and off at a high rate of speed. While this would not be practical for plumbing systems, it works very well for VFDs. Notice that during the first half cycle, the voltage is on half the time. And off half the time. Thus, the average voltage is half of 480 volts or 240 volts. By pulsing the output, we can achieve any average voltage on the output of the VFD. The main VFD parts, AC input connector, rectifier diodes, DC bus, DC bus capacitors, inverter thyristors, 
heat sink, cooling fan, power output connector, main board, pre-charge and discharge capacitors. Why should I use a VFD? Reduce energy consumption and energy costs if you have an application that does not need to be run at full speed. Then you can cut down energy costs by controlling the motor with a variable frequency drive, which is one of the benefits of variable frequency drives. VFDs allow you to match the speed of the motor-driven equipment to the load requirement. There is no other method of AC electric motor control that allows you to accomplish this. Electric motor systems are responsible for more than 65% of the power consumption in industry today. Optimizing motor control systems by installing or upgrading to VFDs can reduce energy consumption in your facility by as much as 70%. Additionally, the utilization of VFDs improves product quality, and reduces production costs. Combining energy efficiency tax incentives, and utility rebates, returns on investment for VFD installations can be as little as 6 months. Increase production through tighter process control by operating your motors at the most efficient speed for your application, fewer mistakes will occur, and thus, production levels will increase, which earns your company higher revenues. On conveyors and belts you eliminate jerks on startup allowing high throughput. Extend equipment life and reduce maintenance your equipment will last longer and will have less downtime due to maintenance when it's controlled by VFDs ensuring optimal motor application speed. Because of the VFD's optimal control of the motor's frequency and voltage, the VFD will offer better protection for your motor from issues such as electrothermal overloads, phase protection, under voltage, over voltage, etc. When you start a load with a VFD you will not subject the motor or driven load to the instant shock of across the line starting, but can start smoothly, thereby eliminating belt, gear and bearing wear. It also is an excellent way to reduce and or eliminate water hammer since we can have smooth acceleration and deceleration cycles.